Welcome back in, everyone. Hey, the team keeps winning. We keep doing match day minus ones. We'll take that for sure. I'm back here at St. David's Performance Center. Adrian Healy, Sonny G, Sonny Guadarama is with me. Uh, uh, match day minus one presented by PointsBet, founding partner of Austin FC, ahead of. How good, how good does the do these words sound, Sonny? The Western Conference semifinal at Q2 Stadium. Against Dallas, couldn't be better. <laughs> couldn't like, be couldn't be scripted better. I either. don't know if it gets any better. Of course, a win and then a conference final, it, it does get even better. But we'll we'll get to that. Let's um, let's look back first at. Um, I'm interested in what your what your experience of Sunday was like, and then I'll tell you what mine was like. Because because what a what a first playoff game uh, to have as as a club in their history for the Verde and Black. I don't know if we we would have dared script it like that, but we should have known something extraordinary was coming. That's true. I, I would say roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was it was a, a roller coaster of emotions. I think RSL um, started the game off strong, and yeah. the two zero was just a sign of, of what was to come. And then I think the red card really changed the game. It was important that the team was able to score somewhat early. If someone yeah. was going to score, it was going to be Drew. Yep. I thought he stepped up huge. And then I thought with the red card, it was only a matter of time that they were going to have good opportunities in front mm. of the goal. And it was just who was going to be able to put it, put it in at the end of the day. We had a couple of chances prior yep. to the PK. Um, then Drusy steps up again, <laughs> scores a PK, freaking PKs, and we're just. Did you? Did you honestly think it was going? Because I got, I, I must admit, I got to the 89th, 88th minute. I was like, maybe this just isn't going to happen. I was like, and it was agony for me. I'll tell you where I was watching. But did you? I mean, I, I just, you know. I thought there was still going to be one more opportunity. The way that yeah. Salt Lake was just there, they weren't really trying to play soccer. They were just kicking they the were ball just out, clinging they were, onto what they had. They were just they? inviting Austin FC to yeah. just put balls in the box and see what could happen. So I knew that there was still going to be one more chance, and luckily. Luck was on our side, I would say, in a PK yeah. and changed the course of the game. Then over time, it's more the same. You're like, could this ball go in? Could this ball go in? And then Brad Stuber just kind of yeah. takes over the show at that point. Yeah. So so two individuals, we've already mentioned them both. Sebastian Drusi, um, what more is left to say? If anything, it just, it just took his legend to a whole different status, didn't it? And not only, as you said, very important, that goal just before halftime to get us back. And then the red card. Uh, immediately after I've done but but just to step up there with the coolness he had in the 92nd minute season on the line basically I mean that is you want pressure on a penalty penalty kick y you want him taking it for sure right and I want to add the fact that he scored two PKs in the game How, right it's, it's for a player it's difficult to shoot two PKs in the same game um, and be able to in both huge moments yeah uh, so it seems like Drusi feels no pressure yeah and Someone who responded to the pressure, Mr. Brad Stuver. You mentioned him, um, another uh, legendary figure whose legend will will grow after that. I just I just loved his his reaction to the to the win. It was just, it was just perfect, Stuver, just to turn around in front of the fans and ah oh, and have everyone like run down and say. But that moment happened because of the hard work he put in, and um, you know he's already shown himself to be a pretty good stopper of penalty kicks, hasn't he? But a lot of it is down to kind of putting the putting the work and the study in it is and i think he we're in good hands in case that were to come up again yeah in pks i think the other teams knowing that he had made saves during the shootout are going to be a little bit more weary when shooting pks against brad stuver yeah even in the shootout it was agony because when stuver guessed the the, the right one. way on the first one, and it slipped underneath. I was like, God, it really is not going to be our day, is it? But but I was happy to be wrong. So I was watching the game. I was doing the um, the later game in Montreal for ESPN. Uh, would have loved to have been here, obviously, but watching it up there with uh, the RSL analyst, Brian Dunseth, who I was calling Montreal Orlando with. So we were, we were both kind of... In French. <laughs> in French, we were watching the game. Yes. <laughs> Should add that point. Thanks, TVA in, uh, in Montreal. Uh, the commentary was great. I've got to say, I have no idea what they were saying, but I'm but sure it was, it, was it was perfect. <laughs> right spot on. <laughs> les Vertes, Les Vertes et Noirs, they kept on saying. Um, but it was just, I, you know, that's what we love about this sport. It can be, it can be agony and ecstasy so close together, and it really was in the space of just just a few minutes. And, and you, know, you weren't here, but the atmosphere here during yeah. PKs was 
everybody was just in their seat watching. Yeah. yeah. No one was making a noise. Everybody was just completely focused. And then as uh, Salt Lake sends that last shot into the stands, the, the crowd just went right. berserk. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> to look at Brian Dunsev's face as Teach Schmidt's penalty has sailed over the bar was uh, he was he was um, not a happy camper. But I was, uh, I was it, well, and it got extremely quiet as well after right. the first ten minutes. Yeah, it was an eerie Austin FC stadium, so quiet because um, yeah. really got like punched in the face during that yeah. game. And then as we start reacting and scoring, the, the fans started coming back. Yeah. The players started just feeling feeding off the fans really and then at the end yeah. well, we know the result of course the start was agony but like getting punched in the face like that was that uh you know was that a, a useful welcome to the playoffs moment for, for I, Austin I mean knowing this season I, I think it wasn't new to them right uh it didn't seem like the players were, were that affected by it um, yeah just kept to the game plan and eventually put away their chances the sixth time this season we have uh, at least avoided defeat from a from a two goal deficit. Pretty remarkable. Um, only three times in the whole history of the league had it been done before in the playoffs. Um, so already making make, more history, make, make it, making history. Um, pretty remarkable. Thirty eight shots they they rained down in the end. In the end, they got over the line, and that's that's all that matters, isn't it? In the in the playoffs, it is. The playoffs is it's not about playing pretty. It's right. not about scoring a whole bunch. It's just about winning the game and moving on. Yeah. So I think it was check. Yep. Job done. So then we got, well, did we get what we want on Monday night? So the next night we're watching, you know, we know we're going to be playing the winner of Dallas, Minnesota. That one goes all the way to penalties as well. Um, I, I changed my mind. At first I thought, okay, I want to play Minnesota yeah. um, and not play Dallas. But watching how Minnesota plays and they just sat back and, and countered every single time, I thought, it would be a much better matchup if Austin can play against Dallas. Now, Dallas has much more of an offensive threat than Minnesota. I feel like players that are running in, in behind, um, but but there's also space to play in behind them as well. So I think our offensive players are going to have opportunities in front of the goal. Yeah. Um, I think we just have to watch out that FC Dallas players just love to make runs in behind Yeah. and, and are very pacey. Um, so I think it's going to make for hopefully an exciting game with, with goals as well. Yeah. No, I, I've got to admit, I was delighted it turned out to be the derby, even though I think Minnesota would have been a, a slightly more beatable opponent. No, there's no beat, you know, easy opponents in, in, at this stage no. in the playoffs at all. So it's pick your poison. For me, why not take on your local rivals? Um, yes, they're a team we haven't beaten yet, but we played, you know, we played much better against them this year. Yep. And we lifted a trophy up there in Dallas just a couple of months ago. And that's that's a big... And this is the playoffs. Yeah. All the other stats went out the window, and I think it's these 90 minutes, and, and can Austin FC get the job done? And I think people will forget about if they've beaten them, if they haven't beaten them. Right. No, all of that quickly goes out goes out the window in the in the 90 minutes. It's only the second All-Texas playoff game ever in the history of the league. Uh, last in 2007, when Dallas lost to Houston, and Houston went on to win MLS Cup. So... Hopefully that's a sign. Nice of little good, nice little good omen there for for us. Um, you know, it's uh, the 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 tantalizing prize. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but but let, let's face it. This is what's on offer now. Is we we found out um, on Thursday night, LAFC conference final awaits and a chance to go there to play for uh, the Western Conference title. That's that's. Where we've that won. Is, that is a massive prize, yes, against a team we've already beaten twice. So, yeah, it was kind of bittersweet watching that L.A. derby, wasn't it? Because knowing if the Galaxy had won... We'd be here again. Another chance to get at Q2. Not overlooking Dallas, but just saying, good to know what the road ahead is. Um, so how do we how do we beat Dallas this time? Having, having seen what we've done against them, what Minnesota tried to do against them... Um, and what we did against RSL, uh, what what do we have to do differently? You think on um, on Sunday than we did last Sunday? What would you like to see us do a little differently? There, there's a lot of things. Well, first night get scored on twice. In the right. first ten minutes that would be right. But I think scoring first against Dallas. I think yeah. Dallas comes in. Uh, we've already seen them. They, they'll they'll put us under pressure. Um, they'll put our back four under pressure. They are fast. But I think if you score, then they're sending more and more numbers forward. 
and there's more and more space in the back. So I think it's going to be crucial for our defense to kind of keep the offensive players at bay while our attacking players hopefully find those spaces in behind it and can be dangerous. Yeah. I think we've only ever scored once first in a game against Dallas, and that was... Uh that was the tail end of last year where we went up to Frisco. Diego Fagundes scored a beauty, remember? And then we ended up losing 2-1. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you. Get our noses in front. Crucial. crucial. Absolutely crucial. Uh, Dallas actually have not been great away from uh, from Frisco of late. They've only won one of their last six, I think, uh, to, 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 uh, to finish up the regular season. They were kind of like us. They were almost cruising through the last three or four weeks of the regular season without the real pressure because they had they had essentially qualified as well so it, it's going to be a good matchup yeah both teams went the extra mile in the playoffs or sorry into uh overtime and into pks so i think legs are even yeah it's not like a huge trip from dallas to austin yeah it's gonna it's gonna be an exciting and by the way it just bolsters how crucial it was to finish second get those extra few points to finish second because we'd all be feeling very different about this if we that's had to true. go to frisco that is true it was 2v3 the but the other way around but that's right yeah i can't wait to, I, again i'm gonna have to watch it from afar again i'm gonna be in montreal again i'm gonna be watching in french I, I wish i could listen to your spanish radio broadcast actually there we go maybe that I, I maybe that's what i should do this weekend oh really so you may do English with, yeah. with Lincoln. We'll All right, well, link. in that case, well, I do have the link to the English. Maybe oh, I yeah. should do that. I don't know if I can sync it up with uh, Montreal TV, but um, but I just, I just, you know, it sold out again, like another record broken. It sold out in what? About Seconds. A, a minute and a half or something this time, uh, the, the playoff tickets. it's People are asking, hey, can you get like, no, there's no right. tickets anywhere. I don't right. know where to get tickets. <laughs> Got more chance of getting a ticket to Formula One than, right. uh, than than Sunday. Uh, what a day, by the way, in Austin on on Sunday. I wonder how many people are going to try and do both the F one and the and the playoff game. It, it would be worth it. You probably have to steal one of those cars to make helicopter. It to Q2. <laughs> yes. Over. <laughs> Sonny's always uh, a step ahead. Always, always a step ahead, or or two. Um, but I just uh, the fact that it's Sunday night as well under the lights. To me, Sonny makes it makes it just even more special. I just yeah you know, can can we take that decibel, that volume level even even to another level? I think we got a chance. On I, I think night. so too. And I think the the haters, the doubters um, throughout the league from the very beginning. I think this if if you make it into this next stage, I think you've basically proven everybody wrong. From right. what was last year to this year, the the story has completely shifted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've got a, a stat to throw at you to 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 back that up. Um, you know, a lot of talk about expansion teams and how they struggle in the, in the playoffs. And quite frankly, that's been true over the years. Even with the bigger expansion teams, um, you know, you think of Seattle, Atlanta, LAFC. When all those teams came to the league, their first time they made the playoffs, we've already gone further than them. In fact, there's only ever been one expansion team who's made it all the way to the conference final in the first time in the playoffs and that was mr wolf's chicago fire all mm. the way back in 98 who who won it all so you know this this achievement right now is good if we get one step further it, it, we, we, it we, that's another that's another you know record-breaking achievement for this team so um so again I think we should all be savoring this as it as it as it unfolds, because um, we're seeing seeing history be made. Um, so Sunday night, everything everything on the line. Um, how's your mood going to be? Uh, the 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 the, uh, the sunny sentimiento uh, in general as as we head into uh, um, just just the perfect the perfect Western Conference semifinal. It is. There's no. If, if someone was writing a script of what this would look like, I, I think this would this would be the game that would yeah. have played out. Um, big games are built for big players. Yep. So far, our big players have stepped it up. I thought for when this cross was on the money, Drew yeah. header was there, Brad Stuver stepped it up. So we're going to need these experienced players mm. to step it up. If our big players are able to do that, I think will be in, in, in good hands, especially with the fans going berserk. I highly doubt there will be many red shirts in the stands yeah. this weekend. No, I don't think... <laughs> unless they're spending hundreds of dollars on the uh, secondary market, I don't think there will be. The, the color red will be in uh, short supply, which is uh, 
which is just right. And I, I'm I'm with you. I think I think we have. I mean, obviously they have great players. They have Ariola, they have Ferreira, Bomacal. They, they have good players, but they don't they don't have what we have. The no. difference maker. They don't have Drewsy. No, nope. Drewsy does Dallas. I think that's that that should be the. <laughs> That should be the, the T-shirt after. And Stuber in the back. Yes, and, and for Gundes too. <laughs> and don't forget, Diego has an excellent... He's already scored three times for us in three different games against Dallas. So, you know what there's never been in the five-game history between these two teams so far? Never been a goal from a set piece. I think that, change, that, that could change Sunday night. That could change. Di Diego steps up. That'd be a good way to open the scoring, wouldn't it? Uh, um Let's finish with uh, a moment of gratitude. Uh, actually, something we already referenced earlier on, um, the Austin FC video analysis team. Uh, why them particularly? Well, they do a lot of the work that goes into uh, helping Brad Stuver and Preston Burpo prepare for penalties. They, they are uh, exhaustive behind the scenes cutting video. And literally, you know, with every potential penalty taker on the opponent, they will go back and look at his entire history of, uh, of penalties. <laughs> Preston Purpo told me a little earlier this morning that Francisco Hara has taken over 50 penalties in his career, and he has. He has a single one. He has a, I mean, yeah, and they're all over the place, obviously, because he's taken that and many. And Ferreira barely took his first PK. That is crazy. Right, I know. I could not believe that. Yeah. Yeah, really strange. But that, that the, the video team... You know, you've seen these guys in action, Sonny. They, they, um, it shows. Brad Stuber was right on every single one yeah. of the PKs. The athletes have to produce yep. and have to be really skilled to do so, but the homework behind that is is crucial, isn't it? Yep, it helps for sure. Yeah, And I think you also see the evidence when perhaps it isn't at that level. Uh, um, so that will do it for us. Um, Sonny, wish I could be there with you on Sunday. Wish I could be there with all of you at Q2. It's going to be fantastic watching it from the far. I will have just done the Montreal-New York City game. But we'll um, see you next week here. There's still a chance, by the way, that we get another game at Q2. You That's know, true. You know how that has to happen? We have to we have to all be New York City fans for that to happen. So we have to Which get through, are. and they have to get through. So, so, um, so, yeah, enjoy Sunday night. Very special indeed. We'll, we'll take some pictures. We'll send you. Dallas... Back up I-35 the way they That's came, true. you know? In traffic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know the details. ESPN, uh, John Champion, Taylor Twelman with a call, uh, 7 p.m. start time. Sonny and Roger on Spanish radio. Actually, you're on English radio. Should li listen to Lincoln and Sonny on English radio and That's Roger right. on Spanish radio um, if, if you can't be there in person. Uh, enjoy the game, everyone, and... Let's hope we're back in these chairs a week today previewing a Western Conference final. That would be very nice indeed. We'll talk to you next time. Enjoy.